equitable distribution of national wealth and opportunities to all persons is a cardinal requirement of every democracy. As a child with disability, um, sometimes when you are born into a family and you're a disabled person, or maybe after your birth you develop any condition, um, you are kind of discriminated against. Sometimes people don't want to come closer, the family members, the standard family members don't want to go, come closer. And if you are not fortunate enough, you know that the husband will leave the woman and then you as a child, you'll be there with your mom. And sometimes these women, they get frustrated and you are not properly taken care of. In a society like ours, the challenges faced by PWDs are numerous. I would say financially, because with my institution, um, always parents with uh, additional support units children, I say they are additional support units children, they are mostly raised by single parents. And if we compare the percentage, you can see that most of them are coming from a poor background. Uh, you don't really see people who have a good financial status, children uh, running all around. Some of them have special caretakers at home. Some of them are enrolled in homeschooling. But those with a typical financial background, it's, it's quite challenging for them. Our system doesn't understand what the white cane stands for. And for that matter, when people see someone using the white cane, they don't give it the full recognition as a blind person and offer the needed support. I can talk of drivers, for instance, when you are using the white cane, you want to cross the road, and you show the white cane, some decide not to hit to what the white cane stands for. The issue is very, very alarming. Here in Ghana, even women who have uh, deaf uh, hearing impairments find it difficult going to the hospitals because they do not have somebody there who would interpret in their own way of uh, communication what their ailments are and then the medications to take. So most of them are wrongly diagnosed. When I was pregnant at that time, I depended on my parents. So when I'm going to the hospital, sometimes it's difficult for me. I sometimes go to the hospital alone. Or I take my mother around to go and then meet the daughter. Because my mother knows the problem, she will explain to the daughter and it happens like this throughout, so I give birth to the baby and to send the baby back to the hospital. When the baby is sick, I give the baby to my mother, she sends the baby to the hospital. All these things are because there is communication barrier and there is no sign language interpreters available there to communicate with us. There has been instances where a pregnant woman lost a baby. Actually, the baby aborted because of the drug that was given to her. They didn't know she was pregnant upon all the signing she did. As they say, education is a key to success. But then, for us here in Ghana, it's a bit complicated because as a physically disabled lady, I remember I struggled a lot. Um, some villages that uh, you cannot find a school. You have to move from one village to another before you assess school. And even the school environment is not accessible to me as a person with physical disability. And even the deaf, they uh, to the same thing because as a deaf person, you will need uh, an interpreter to interpret for you, but we don't have them in our various schools. You know, education is a major area where we face a lot of problems, especially when it comes to infrastructure like textbooks. Textbooks are major for any educational system. Now, when you can't get books in the format you can read, of course, it impedes your progress. I'm talking about access to libraries, which we don't have right now. I'm talking about access to textbooks, even books for leisure reading. So those are things that really worry us when it comes to education. So for the blind person who would have to read in a different format, use Braille or sometimes audio and some special gadgets to aid them in their education, it becomes very difficult. For the hearing impaired persons, usually for them, the education is cut off right after senior high school. Because moving on to tertiary level, you are not guaranteed that you have an interpreter follow you around to lectures back and forth just so you can also grasp and attain uh, the certificates that you have uh, you want to. So every citizen in Ghana have the right, have equal rights to enjoy and to do a lot of things. 
Disabled people also have their rights, equal rights. So we all know that deaf people depend on sign language to communicate. So they shouldn't discriminate us. Whatever is meant for us, they should let us have it. They shouldn't focus on other people. We also have our human rights. We are citizens of Ghana. We are part of the country. This region is part of the country. We need equal access to everything. In terms of our participation and, and decision makings, right from the grassroots assemblymen, MP, ministers, and even to the wherever level, at the job place or the political levels, unnecessary persons with disabilities are totally out. They do not actually, people do not actually don't see the sense in it a disabled person coming to lead. The judicial service here, uh, I don't know whether it's a Tamale High Court. When I went there and inquired, to, to, to know why a particular session, I don't know the name of that session, is highly inaccessible to persons with disabilities. Highly inaccessible. And uh, when you try to talk, they try to also intimidate you with their, <laughs> some of their legal distance. Uh, yeah, so in, in fact, we are, not, we are not really having the, the best side of uh, the buildings when it comes to accessibility. I think uh, we, can take it, uh, we can take it upon ourselves as media, persons to launch a campaign on our various platforms uh, just to be educating the public, engaging respective stakeholders on how to take some of the issues that always come on board when they set organize programs of this nature so that uh, we can all come, out, come up with uh, ideas to ensure that uh, we help the vulnerable to make their society a very comfortable place for everyone. How do we ensure that persons with disability also participate in the benefits of this industry? The use of petroleum revenue is another area we can use to intervene to support persons with disability because I am aware that the law provides that part of the oil money should be used to support persons with disability. The two extractive industries, I believe, contribute more to the budget of the country than any other industry. And if we have to achieve inclusive development, we cannot ignore the gaps in terms of participation that we find in these industries. But I'm glad today because, Honorable, you have promised that we have money in the oil industry and we are going to push for it. Disability inclusion is therefore non-negotiable.